In this video, I'll be going through all of the YouTube ads targeting options so you can see what the possibilities are and also which options work the best and which ones don't work so well. My name is Kyle Sullerud. I'm the CEO of AdLeg and the founder of VidHorder, a YouTube ads targeting tool. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the third component of the ad leg arch. In my last two videos, I covered the first two components of the ad leg arch. Component one was funnel and offer. Component two was video ads. And component three, this video is all about targeting. The other components will be revealed in my next videos, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see those videos as soon as they are published. The ad leg arch was developed to illustrate the crucial components of a YouTube ad campaign. All of the blocks rest on one another, so if you remove any part of the arch, the whole thing crumbles. But get all of these components right, and you'll have a wildly successful YouTube ads campaign on your hands. In my opinion, my very correct opinion that I think you'll have a hard time proving wrong, YouTube ads gives us the most robust targeting system that marketers have ever had at our disposal. This video is going to provide you a summary of all the targeting options available. In previous videos on this channel, I've gone much more in depth on all of this stuff. If you want the in-depth stuff, then go check out my YouTube ads targeting playlist, which includes several videos and which I will link to below. YouTube splits targeting into two main categories, audiences and content. Before I get to those, I want to talk about some other targeting options that don't really fit into one of those two categories. Location targeting allows you to target users in specific cities, countries, zip codes, counties, postcodes, Wherever you live, whatever type of geography you have, there's a targeting option for you. You can target a radius around a specific address. You can also exclude locations if you're targeting a bigger area and want to exclude a smaller location within. Language targeting allows you to target users who speak specific languages. You should always utilize language targeting and you should always only select the one language that your ads are in. With device targeting, you can target users based on the type of device they're using to watch YouTube. Mobile phones, tablets, computer screens, or TV screens can all be targeted separately. There's also advanced targeting for mobile and tablet devices, which allows you to target specific operating systems, specific devices, and specific networks. If I only want to show my ads to people who are on Wi-Fi or who are on the Verizon phone network, I can. If I only want to show my ads to people who are on an iPhone Pro Max or an iPhone 12 mini, I can, but just because I can do something doesn't mean I should. These options are pretty cool, but unless you're advertising an app or something where the type of phone someone has is relevant, you don't really need to worry about getting that specific. Day and hour targeting lets you set a schedule so your ads will only run during specific times. Again, not very practical unless your ads are trying to generate phone calls or something where it would only make sense to bring in leads during a certain time of day. And that brings us back to audience and content targeting. I'll break these down further, but first understand that with audience targeting, you are targeting the user. It doesn't matter what they are watching on YouTube. With content targeting, you are targeting the types of videos people are watching and you're placing your ads on those videos. You could layer this targeting so somebody would need to be in your targeted audience and watching your targeted content at the same time. Now, let's break down audience and content targeting, starting with audiences. Demographic targeting allows you to target people based on their age, gender, household income, and parental status. And demographic targeting is pretty accurate. 
when you sign up for a Google account, you actually enter your birthday and your gender. So age and gender targeting are the most accurate. Household income and parental status are things that Google figures out about you based on your online behavior. And they're pretty good about figuring those things out too. I made a video a while back called Google Ad Personalization, where I show you how you can see what your own ad targeting profile looks like. You can see the demographics and the various audiences Google has placed you in, and you can see how accurate that is. Usually it's pretty accurate. I'll put a link to that video in the description below in case you're interested. The rest of the audience targeting that I'm about to share with you is really the result of Google figuring things out. Because aside from our age and our gender, we don't tell Google much about ourselves. There's not a survey that we fill out that Google can use to target ads to us. But every action you take online, everything you search for, every website you visit, every YouTube video you watch, is basically like answering a hidden survey question. Google has compiled thousands and thousands of these answers from you, and uses this information to place you in various audiences. Detailed demographic targeting allows you to target users based on parental status, slightly different than the parental status targeting I mentioned a few minutes ago, marital status, education, meaning the highest level achieved, home ownership status, and employment company size and industry. With affinity targeting, you can target people based on what their interests and habits are. Google has a list of about 140 affinity audiences. Things like food and dining, technology, travel. Affinity audience targeting doesn't work very well unless you're advertising something that is a perfect match for one of the 140 audiences available. And even then it's pretty hit or miss whether it's going to work. I don't generally recommend affinity audience targeting and my company rarely uses it. In-market targeting is much more effective than affinity targeting. Google has about 700 in-market targeting options for us to choose from. In-market means someone is literally in the market to buy something. They're actively researching products or services. In-market audiences are very product focused. Things like autos and vehicles, business services, and these narrow down into even more specific audiences. Advertising and marketing services, office supplies, payroll services. In-market audiences can work great if you're selling something that's a good match for one of the audiences. Just don't try to force it. There are other ways to target if you can't find an in-market audience that's a good fit. Life events targeting lets you target people based on major events that may be happening in their lives. Events like creating a business, graduating from college, getting married, purchasing a new home. If one of these life events would make somebody a perfect customer for what you're selling, then life event targeting could work really well, especially because people are constantly being added and removed from these audiences. So you can just keep targeting them forever and they won't go dry because they're constantly being replenished. With retargeting, you can target people who have already interacted with your business in some way. For retargeting to work on YouTube, you need to have at least 100 people in a retargeting audience. So keep that in mind as I go through these options. Website visitor retargeting allows you to create and target lists of people who have been to your website. You can narrow this down based on specific pages they visited, how recently they visited, or based on specific actions they took while they were on your website. With YouTube user retargeting, you can target people who have watched your videos, liked your videos, shared your videos, subscribed to your videos, subscribe to your videos, subscribe, subscribe. If you have an established YouTube channel and a big enough audience of people to target from your channel, then this is one of the most effective targeting methods you can use with YouTube ads. Another great option is customer list targeting. Google lets you upload a list of your customers, names, email addresses, phone numbers, locations. 
they will then try to match your list with their known users and create an audience of all the matches. Another thing I'll mention here is that with any type of audience targeting, you can also exclude the audience from your campaign. This is especially helpful with retargeting audiences because you can exclude people from seeing your ad if they've already purchased or signed up for the thing that you are advertising. Similar audience targeting is the last type of targeting that falls within the retargeting section in the Google Ads interface. Interface, although it isn't actually retargeting. Whenever you set up a retargeting audience, Google automatically creates a similar to list that is supposed to be an audience of people who are similar to the people in your retargeting audience. Sounds great, but in practice, these similar audience lists usually don't perform very well. So don't get too excited. The last type of audience targeting to talk about is custom audience targeting. There are currently four types of custom audiences that you can use in your YouTube ad targeting. People with any of these interests or purchase intentions is an option where you add a list of words or phrases and Google creates an audience for you based on those words. When creating custom audiences based on keywords, this is not the best option to use. It's similar to affinity audience targeting, which as I mentioned a little bit ago, rarely works very well and I don't recommend it. Just the same, I don't recommend using people with any of these interests or purchase intentions. The custom audience option I do recommend is people who searched for any of these terms on Google. The system doesn't actually target just people who have searched for the keywords that you enter. It's still an audience based around those keywords, but this is the most effective type of custom audience you can build. You do need to create lots of different custom audiences based around lots of different keywords and different combinations of keywords. That way you can test and see which custom audiences are going to work best for you. They're not all going to work. In fact, most of the custom audiences that you try to target are not going to work. But even so, this is where you will find the audiences that will work and that will allow you to scale your ad spend. Another custom audience option is people who browse websites similar to which allows you to enter a list of website addresses into your targeting. Again, this sounds great, but the system doesn't actually target people who have visited those websites. Instead, it builds audiences based on the content of the websites. This type of targeting is very hit or miss. It's actually much harder to get a hit than with other types of targeting. So I rarely use it. I would never start a campaign with this type of custom audience. It's just something to keep in mind for the future once you're starting to scale. The last type of custom audience you can build is based around people who use apps similar to. Here too, the audience won't just consist of people who are using specific apps. We've rarely seen one of these audiences work, but if there's an app that is used by your target audience, and only by your target audience, then this is an option worth testing. That sums up audience targeting. Let's take a breather and move on to content targeting. Content targeting is very unique to YouTube ads. It's one of the reasons the quality of traffic from YouTube ads is so high. Why is the quality of the traffic so high? Well, if you were selling a product about dog training, you could show your ad to an audience of people who are interested in dog training. But what if you could show your ad to people who were watching dog training videos? Obviously, these people are interested in dog training and they're interested in dog training at that exact moment. And that's why content targeting can be so powerful. There are different types of content targeting available. Topics are categories of videos, and with topic targeting, you're selecting one of these predefined categories. Things like science, real estate, food and drink. With topics and subtopics, there are about 2,500 different options to choose from. If the thing you're advertising is a good fit for one of these topics, then topic targeting will probably work pretty well for you. 
With placement targeting, you can run your ad on specific videos and channels. This is the most specific type of YouTube ad targeting available. So you can really narrow in on your customer with amazing accuracy. The downside is that it's so specific that it will greatly limit the number of impressions your ads will get. This can be a good thing early on, but if you wanna scale with YouTube ads, you'll have to use other types of targeting. You can scale placement targeting by adding a lot of video and channel links to your targeting. This can be a lot of work, but it's worth it because of how well placement targeting works. You can use a tool like VidHorder to quickly find thousands of placements to target. I'll put a link in the description below so you can see how VidHorder works. Another type of content targeting is video lineup targeting. Video lineups are collections of videos that the team at YouTube has put together for us. You can't see what the videos are, but if you're targeting a video lineup, your ad will run on any video that is within that lineup. Most of these aren't very useful, but this is a relatively new type of targeting and Google is still adding a lot of new video lineups. So if you find a video lineup that is relevant to your product, you should definitely be testing that targeting. The last type of targeting and one that you'll be using a lot when you're running YouTube ads is keyword targeting. YouTube classifies keyword targeting as content targeting. Naturally, this would make you think that your ad will be shown on content relevant to those keywords. But if you've ever looked at where your ads showed within a keyword targeting campaign, then you know that most of where your ads are going to be shown have nothing to do with the keywords that you are targeting. In practice, keyword targeting works a lot like audience targeting. Your ads will show to people who are interested in the keywords that you are targeting. Your ads will also show to a lot of people who have no interest in the keywords that you're targeting. And that's mostly how YouTube ad targeting works. You do your best to define your target customer using the various targeting options outlined in this video. And even after doing your best, most of the targeting that you try is not going to work, but some of it is going to work and some of it's going to work extremely well. Kind of like Jeff Bezos, who knows that most of what Amazon invests in isn't going to pay off, but some of it is going to pay off big time and they bank most of their revenue off of the big winners. In my next video, I'll be explaining how to structure your account so you can effectively and efficiently test your targeting and figure out which targeting is going to allow you to scale. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And if you're already doing targeting research, then you need to check out VidHorder. VidHorder helps you research video placements, channel placements, and keywords so you can make sure you're using the best targeting possible when launching your YouTube ad campaign. Check out the link below so you can learn more about VidHorder and see how it works. And thank you for watching today's video. Again, my name is Kyle Sellerud and I'll see you in the next video.